So a lot of people cannot afford to buy the latest smartphones on the market. So we look for ones usually in the $200 price range. And if you're looking for a phone in the $200 price range, the LG V10 might be a good choice for you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Techie Pocket, and today we're going to be taking a look to see whether the LG V10 is a good phone to buy in 2017. First of all, we have a screen size of 5.7 inches, that's not including the extra second screen at the top. Then the main screen has a resolution of 1440p, the rear camera is 16 megapixels with a dual 5 megapixel front camera. The photos are f1.8, it can shoot up to 4K video 30fps or 1080p 60fps. It has three built-in mics, and the front-facing cameras are either standard or wide-angle. As, as for the looks of the phone, it does look pretty good. I mean, uh, if you compare it to an iPhone or something, or the OnePlus, or the Google Pixel, or even the S8 uh, or 8 Plus, it's definitely not going to look as good as those, but it still has a very nice, good look to it. And even with the battery case I put on it, it just makes it look more rugged. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't really look that good either. It just makes it like it's a phone. So with the battery case or without it, it all depends on how you want to see it. As for the feel, it feels very good in a bigger hand. If you have a little smaller hand, you're definitely not going to be able to reach that much. I, I have a little trouble reaching the uh, second screen. But besides that, it does feel very nice to hold. And considering most people do buy the Plus models of like the S8 Plus and the iPhone Plus, it's probably pretty rare that there's going to be someone who doesn't want the LG V10's large screen. As for the display, it's not AMOLED, I don't know exactly what it is, but it does look good outside in bright light, and it, it does have good contrast and saturation. It's not the best screen, it's not AMOLED, but it looks good. The second screen is also pretty good, but you can tell it's not as good quality. It does have some light bleed coming from the the uh, corner there you can see so if you really dislike that kind of stuff then this is one of those things you should pay attention to as for the camera it's very good for its price at only $170 for this entire uh, phone I'd say this camera is very good it allows for total total manual control of course there's also auto 1080p is a little too sharp but 4k is pretty good but if you're going to render your videos afterwards, then recording in 1080p is fine because you can make the sharpening less in post-production. So I hope you get what I mean. 1080p is a little too sharp. 4K, 4K is very good, but of course 1080p, you don't you lose the 60fps if you don't record in 1080p. So I'd recommend you record in 1080p with 60fps and then just make the sharpening less in post-production. Now for the battery, this is the very bad part. The battery only lasts four hours, which is not acceptable for anyone who wants to use their phone for basically anything. So what I recommend is you buy the iPossible extended battery case, which is what I have on this phone. I'll have a link to that down below. It makes the phone a ton thicker and a lot heavier, but it makes the phone last enough for a day. As for the speaker, it is down firing like a pretty average $200 phone. It doesn't sound sound great, but if you uh, cup your hand around the phone, it does make it sound better. I'd say it's exceptional, but I recommend you wear headphones. Oh, and not to forget that this does have a built-in DAC to make the headphones sound better if you have good headphones. It does have a fingerprint sensor on the power button, which is on the back, and it works very fast. You press it, and it unlocks very fast. Good. Now I'm going to do a few camera tests, so let's go outside. Okay, so this is a camera test, 1080p 60fps. I'm using the mic built in, by the way. I'm not using any lapel mic or anything, so this is how it should sound.
Okay, this is 4K 30 FPS now. Definitely a lot more uh, choppiness when you move it around. The zoom is very good though since it's 4K. It looks very nice and clean. And uh, now let's go indoors. So as you can see, that was pretty good for $200. And if you're wondering how the indoors look, well, this entire video was shot with the LG V10. Now, heat is another main problem when you're talking about phones. The LG V10 is, uh, I don't know how bad it is because this is only my second smartphone, but the heat on the LG V10 is a bit of a problem when you go outside. When I went outside a few times, I was trying to record in 1080p 30fps, and after like 10 minutes of recording in the sun, the camera, when I touch it, would almost burn me, and it would say that it would have to shut off the phone to prevent damage. So, uh, heat is a bit of a problem when I play VR, it also makes it get really hot, but if you're not doing VR and you're not recording outside in the sun, then the heat is not there at all, and it's very comfortable in the hands. As for features, there's only very few bad things I can say about this phone. Number one being that it doesn't have USB Type-C, and, uh, well, that's pretty much one of the only bad things. Uh, it's nice that it has dual cameras in the front. The second screen is handy and useful, but, uh, of course, you can, uh, do other things, like, like, uh, Samsung's Edge feature, that's basically the same as second screen, so it all depends if you like it or not and uh, placement of the buttons are great and in my opinion the buttons where the volume buttons are and the power it should have been like that even on the latest flagship the LG V30 I don't know why they changed it that was a good position okay so as the conclusion for this video if you like a big phone you want some good camera quality and you like the lower price for only $170 then this is a good option for you to check out. There are a few other options like the uh, S6 and the S6 Active and stuff like that, but if this is the phone, you like how it looks, just go ahead and get it. This is a good phone for you. So if you guys seen something that I left out, please let me know down in the comments down below. Like this video and leave a comment down below to let me know if you want me to try out and see if the iPhone 4 can hold up to 2017. Otherwise, that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.